Hi, I'm Trisha at Club Scrap. This is the Butterflies Remix Page Kit Workshop. Welcome. So glad you're here with this beautiful collection. Uh, this is a remix. We've done this Butterflies kit once before. It was a big hit. It sold out very quickly. And we had a few of these uh, prints left and we took them to the expo with us for a make and take when we were in Michigan and at, at the Novi show and everybody wanted to the kit that this paper was in it and it simply didn't exist. So we knew we had to do another release of this stunning collection. So again, this is Butterflies and I'm really glad you're here. As, as usual, I'm going to set aside all of the goodies, ribbons and all that stuff uh, in a different safe spot. And uh, what I typically do is sort the papers into the order that we'll use them. So let's get going with that. I like to pick up all the papers so that they're standing on their edge and I can see them from the top edge quite easily. We have some color differentiations to work on today. So let's begin by taking one sheet of this small butterfly print and let's just put it face down on our work surface. And then just behind that, I'm gonna take one of the large butterfly prints. This we're calling the cyclage print. Put one of those face down. And then we're moving on to a sheet of white. You've give, been given two, but we only need one. And notice right away that this is kind of as a, like a matte finish. It's a really, really, uh, but yeah, with the shine. I don't know, it's hard to explain. Just take one of those. So make sure it's white on both sides and only one. Then you need dark aqua. So be careful here. You've got three different shades of aqua basically. You're gonna have two sheets that are metallic, not that. Then you have these single sheets. There's a dark and a light, okay? So I'm calling for the dark aqua. That's gonna be this one. And then a deep blue. That's pretty easy to recognize. And this has that lineal texture on it. And then the other deep blue. So two of those. Okay, then you're gonna find both of the aqua metallics. So there's two of these. Those will be next. And usually on the back of the stack, you'll find two sheets of cut-aparts. The first one we're gonna take has the big purple butterfly on it. And then the second one you know, has the cute little checked border on the edge here. Let's find the other collage print. So that's this one with the big butterfly face down. And the other white. It's easier and easier as we run out of paper. Then the light aqua, that does not have a metallic sheen, so then you don't have the right sheet. And the small butterfly print, I'm gonna put that one face down. Two of these stunning uh, sand metallics, and then the two purple we end with. If you got lost in there, just go back and figure it out, take it sheet by sheet, and then when you're finished, take, turn everything over again so that the small butterfly print is right on the top. Now I have my trimmer out here and my accordion pocket file. This is gonna be used to sort all of the pieces that we trim into one of four pockets and each pocket will adorn a pair of pages. So four pockets for eight pages, we're good to go. If you don't have this trimmer, um, I, I just can't recommend it enough. Uh, use what you have for now, but then be sure you pick up this model. It's just a great workhorse tool. And if you don't have the accordion pocket file, not a big deal. Just create four piles in the meantime, and then pick up the workshop kit so we can help you make one of those as well. For the time being, I set aside my trimmer, and now I have one of my uh, grid rulers out here. This is the 3 by 14 size. I don't scrap without it. And we're just going to do some tearing, okay? Instead of trimming, we want that nice torn edge. So I'm going to take this small butterfly print, and um, if you tear with the grain, so if I hold the paper by the edge, I can see it's pretty stiff in this direction. It's pretty loose in this direction. So if I tear with it, I'm going to have a very, very smooth tear. If I tear against the grain, it might be have a little more character. So let's just try that. Let's see what happens. All right, so this ruler is three inches wide, and the strip that I want is three inches wide from this edge. So if I just take the whole ruler and put it aligned with the edge of the paper and hold it down with my non-dominant hand, in this case, my left hand, and I'll just tear. And the ruler, you know, does a pretty good job either way, but now I do have this nice, more intricate, jagged edge. If you tear with the grain, it'll be a really smooth edge, okay? Then I'm just gonna take the sheet that I already tore from the larger remnant and turn it around so this straight edge is conveniently located. Again, cover it with the ruler, push down, and tear toward me. 
Okay, we have a little bit of filing to do. So both of these pieces are gonna go in pocket labeled three and four. And when I place them in there, they're gonna go at an angle. So I can still see the numbers, comes off the edge here. Don't try to jam this 12 inch paper into the 12 inch uh, file. And this larger piece goes at an angle into pocket five and six. Okay, a little more tearing here. Bring in this guy. Once again, we're going to do that magic three inch trick here. So with the ruler aligned with this edge that does not have a butterfly on it, notice this, the positioning of the other pieces is up here on the right. So I'll push down, tear toward you. The next tear is three and a quarter inch, but it doesn't really matter that it's exactly. So I'm just going to eyeball the edge of this artwork here. There's a little gap in between these two elements. And I'll just sort of match what's happening there. That's about three and a quarter inches. Of note, we do have a miniature ruler, and sometimes in a situation like this, I just borrow a quarter of an inch from a neighboring ruler. That's why it's nice to have two, two handy. Even if it's something this tiny, you can still increase your measurement by combining two rulers. Either way, I will tear here. And then the next piece I want is three and three quarter. And obviously that's going to take me between these two layers. But again, if you marry up the next ruler and that'll give you the three and three quarters, I might go a little shy of that just because I can see where I ideally want this. And the measurement accuracy doesn't really matter so much. It's just dividing it. Nice. Okay, so now I have all my pieces. Set my rulers aside and let's get these filed. All right, so this one that does not have any butterflies on it, that's going to go in pocket seven and eight. Then we have the one with the two butterflies that goes one and two. Then our great big butterfly also one and two. And then the three small ones that goes in seven and eight. Now we got something in every single pocket. And let's grab that trimmer one more time. Now the little lip on the front of your folder goes underneath the base of the trimmer holds everything close by and vertical for you, which is pretty great. We're moving on to page two of our instructions. And one of the things I noticed, and I didn't even realize it until the, today, <laughs> uh, is that there are no scraps. Like there, nothing will be unused when you're done with this. Maybe like a remnant of ribbon. All right, so white is next in the stack. That's what we're gonna be trimming right now. And a nice easy cut here. We're just gonna start at six inches, cut it in half. Combine the two pieces, stack them neatly, and now we're going to trim them horizontally. Now, a couple of reminders, just make sure your paper is flush up here at the top. I'm going to find eight inches. Always push down on the clear bar, especially for a double thickness of paper. And then slice that, and then slide down to four. Stabilize again. And that gives you six pieces the same size. What a great way to use a 12 by 12. <laughs> All right, uh, we need three of them, three of the four by sixes going in pocket one and two, and uh, one of them, pocket three and four, and the remaining two going in pocket five and six. If you get lost, you can slow me down by adjusting your playback speed on YouTube, or uh, just rewind and then follow along. We're on page two of our instructions, looking at this diagram right here. And all of those paper assignments, or the pocket assignments rather, are on the diagram. Also, I recommend too, if you're just doing this without my assistance, that you ignore what's on the sketch while you trim and then consult the diagram for the filing phase. Now we're moving on to the dark aqua. Again, this is the piece that only has one sheet in the kit. We're gonna do a lot of this. Let's start out by cutting at six and a quarter. Rotate. We'll cut at eight and a half. And four and a quarter. Now, if you're finding those quarters difficult to locate, I just like find the whole number four. I go to the left one vertical column to land on that four and a quarter. And you know, you keep going on columns to add a quarter of an inch. So it's pretty nice and easy. All right, I have two pieces the same. Those are gonna go in five and six. And then we have this little uh, rectangle left. And let's cut this at three and a quarter. All right, so this piece goes in pocket five and six. There's a smaller one going into three and four. The remaining strip, we're gonna cut into three mats and a small piece. So to get the small piece, we're gonna get a big number. So trim at 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. 
It's going to make a nice row on pages seven and eight with the three matching mats. And then this piece ends up getting used on layout three and four, believe it or not. <laughs> okay, now we have the blue lineal. This is that deep blue. We'll start at 11 and three quarters, thus making a very tiny piece. 10 and a half. And then six and a quarter again. As I mentioned, we're gonna do this a lot, that six and a quarter measurement. Rotate and trim at eight and a half. And four and a quarter. Again, making two pieces the same. They're both going in five and six. This time, let's trim the rectangle at three and a half. That's gonna give me a square. Both the square and the rectangle, five and six. The next piece trim at six and a quarter. And then this other one goes in five and six with its brothers and sister, not match. <laughs> then you have this other one going into seven and eight. This is a little shorter. The wider strip, one and two. And the really skinny strip, five and six. All right, let's take our next uh, deep blue. And trim at 11 and three quarters. 10 and three quarters, nine and a quarter, and six and a quarter. I'll rotate and trim at eight and a half, and four and a quarter. Now we've done this, done this a lot. <laughs> okay, one of these mats goes in pocket one and two, the other five and six. Then you have the rectangle, three and four, just as is. Then you have this narrower strip. We're gonna make some squares. So let's cut at 10 and a half, seven, three and a half. And here we go. I guess they're rectangles, they're not really squares. Sorry about that. This is correct. Uh, three by three and a half inch squares. Two of them, pocket one and two, and the other one in three and four. And then you have this little rectangle. We're gonna go ahead and trim that at one and a half. And you can see how I'm doing that here. Just going a little lower so I can see better. Make sure you stabilize on that little paper. And put these in seven and eight, both of them. The widest remaining strip, seven and eight. Then you have this medium sized one, that's three and four. And then you have another skinny guy going in five and six. That was all of page two. Now we're on to page three. So we have two more plain sheets and then our cut aparts left to trim. Let's cut this one at 10 and a half. And six and a quarter. Rotate, eight and a half. Four and a quarter. We made two rectangles the same, pocket three and four. And then this one stays as it is and goes in one and two. Next strip, trim at six and a quarter. Both of these, notice how one's taller than the other. They both go in pocket three and four. And the wide strip, pocket three and four. Next one, aqua metallic. Our first trim now is at eight. Give you a nice whole number there, eight. Four and a quarter. Rotate, eight and a half, and five. All right, this steppy guy <laughs> goes in five and six. Then you have two rectangles that probably match, I mean, in an ideal world, right? Seven and eight. And then you have this strip. It's currently three and three quarters, okay? So we're going to cut it into even rectangles. We'll start out at nine. Six, three. Gather up all of the rectangles. All four of them go in pocket one and two. And then the last piece, trim in half at six. And both of these go in seven and eight. We've arrived at our cut aparts. And especially if you're new, uh, just be aware that the cutter parts are larger than 12 inches. And that little crosshair mark there is a like a cutting guide and I wanna remove everything to the right 
or to the out from the outside of that mark. So I usually start out by trimming some off the edge, but not going directly to the line, but almost there. And then when I make my final rotation, I'll shave off the remaining piece. All right, so now you can see there's still a little bit left and I want that gone, but I can see a little better once I start shrinking this sheet. <laughs> so now I'm gonna line up the edge of this mark with the edge of my blade both at the top and the bottom corner, like I can see it better over here. And let's give that a snip. Then we rotate again, line it up, top and bottom check. I can see the blade. And rotate again. This time I should be able to just find 12 inches, trim off the rest. And same on this final rotation, just find 12 inches. And then that cuts off the tiniest little hair ever. And I've got just these little strips I can dispose of. When we trim now, watch for this narrow border strip to be on our right. And our first cut here is gonna be at 11 and a quarter. Then eight. And four. Rotate and give me a six. Big butterfly and the other guy. Let your dreams be your wings. Five and six. Next, trim the strip with the narrow piece on the right here. We'll go at 11 and five and a half. Seven and eight on the framed piece. Three and four on the tag. Before you file, if you want, you can eyeball the removal of the angles, or as I sometimes do, I use my craft knife and cutting mat to make a perfect cut. This is pretty good though with an eyeball. <laughs> and that goes in pocket three and four. This little scrap, five and six, it's not even a scrap, we used it. Now, again, the word beautiful should be on the right, and we'll trim at 11, eight and a quarter, five and a half, two and three quarters. All right, this butterfly, pocket three and four. Again, we can do a little corner clip here. I close one eye, just kind of try to match that margin reveal. And he also goes in three and four. The next two pieces, one is a tag shape, so I'll clip those corners and file both of these in pocket one and two. The word beautiful, three and four. And then you have this long strip also going in three and four. Now I did say there were no scraps, but a couple of little white triangles, not a big deal. The final cut apart, and this will be your, the last piece you have to cut. It's the same thing. I'm gonna cut shy of that line, rotate and remove everything from the outside edge of that of the cutting guides until I get a nice 12 by 12. And we're ready to cut this into pieces. Now, as I, I, I didn't mention it right out of the gates, but if you've probably noticed, I let the paper pile up to the right of the blade because we'll ultimately file these pieces in the reverse order that they landed, right? So make sure these uh, little blocks are on the right and we'll trim at 11 and a half. And then don't move that piece, just let them pile up, okay? Then 11, nine and three quarters. And notice these, these numbers are falling on the nearest quarter inch. Eight and a half, seven and a half, five and three quarters, and three and a quarter. Rotate, give me a six. All right, this piece, pocket three and four, and then pocket one and two on the darker aqua color. This one will trim at 10, seven and a half, five, two and a half. Okay, so these two rounds go in seven and eight. How rare and beautiful, five and six. The pink circle, one and two. And the last journaling prompt, five and six. Now, everything landed, right? I'm just gonna pick it all up at once, like a deck of cards, like a hand of cards dealt to you. And then you're not having to 
pick it up off the table each time. Sometimes that can be a challenge. All right, this wider border strip, five and six. The purple, one and two. May the wings, seven and eight. Love is like a butterfly, three and four. And then the two uh, checked, one and two. That is all the trimming. Again, no scraps. I think that's pretty awesome. Um, I will hold my accordion pocket file while I get rid of my trimmer. And then we still have this big stack of paper left, and that's intentional. <laughs> okay, so now, with, if you will go with me to the final page of your instructions, whether or not they're on your screen, on a tablet, or um, printed like this, and the final uh, sheets of paper can be placed in front of your work surface, take the top sheet only of the entire stack and slide it to the right. So that's gonna give you a should, if the paper was sorted uh, properly, um, the large collage print on the right, here's the center of my workspace, and then the white on the left. We're gonna start with layout seven and eight and end with one and two with all the pieces placed but not adhered. And then you can go back, starting at page one, and adhere your way through the kit. So we won't be using glue. It's That's something I'm sure you know how to do. You don't need my help with that. Okay, I think the best place to start on this one is with this torn sheet going along the left edge. It's not touching the left edge by any means. It's kind of like maybe an inch or two from it. And then um, across is going to be this guy with the torn edge and the text is upright and then we'll have the dark blue nested with our title made the wings of the butterfly okay now above this we're going to add two metallic aqua metallic uh, photo mats now this is what's going to determine where this piece sits so just kind of puzzle it in there. So we're creating a frame basically around this and then this can scoot in even more. So when you do go back to adhere this, that's what I'm kind of looking for. And I just have a nice eighth inch reveal basically around all those pieces. Now along this side, we can just simply stack three of these mats and I love to trim them to a three and three quarter inch height. I know it means you crop a little bit off your photos, but I like how it's like a film strip style. And then this um, darker blue should nest with your framed element. And that fits in there and kind of covers up one of the butterflies. I've got a lot of butterflies going on here. From your goodies, you can find one of these die cut tags. It's really cool how the butterfly pops up. Now, when I made these layouts, I was home uh, and working at my kitchen counter and I didn't have any foam adhesive, but I highly recommend using some to, just to force those pop-ups to stay up. And that's gonna go up here and we'll add some ribbon to that later. Now across the bottom, you've got two of these horizontal mats. So it's nice, it balances out. You got a vertical, horizontal. And again, I was home working on the kitchen counter and I just used scissors to trim my circles. So those are gonna go here once you cut them out, either with a die cut in your circle die or whatever. And then I finished uh, the, the layout by putting this silver filigree butterfly within the open circle there at the top. To see the finished pages, let's take a look. Here we are. Oh yes, okay, now here's my butterfly that I wanna add some foam adhesive to this. Oh, so sweet. Um, I just looped some of the aqua grow grain ribbon through the top of the tag, taped it to the back. And I cut the butterfly here in half. You can use your trimmer, you could use the scissors. You could use scissors, <laughs> plural. So now I have the wing and I can place it here. What's cool about these particular butterflies is that they're reversible. So if you wanted another wing facing right, you just flip it around. That's, that's just a nice quality uh, laser cut right there. Okay, that was uh, this side. And then page seven, all finished up here. Just, oh yes, there must, they must be in here. Did I miss my little blue? I did. <laughs> that's why we do it this way. Two dark blue. Now these can anchor embellishments or they could be tiny photos, maybe sunset photo, maybe, maybe a little butterfly photo. I don't know. Or it could be nothing. It just adds a little color. 
And I also did uh, use one of these cute little appliques. You have six of them and they're just perfect. They're nice and flat. I placed him right over the printed butterfly on that title. So again, here's the finished page. I have a loop of the bl blue silk ribbon taped to the back of the circle. Again, cut by hand. So you don't need any special equipment. Let's say you're camping, you can get the job done with a few basic tools. All right, that is seven and eight. Now, this is the stack method. So I want you to slide just the white over on top of, this is layout seven, going on top of eight. And yes, things are gonna get all mixed up, but when you go back to this, even if you dump it all into a bag and don't get to it for a while, all the pieces will be right where they need to be and you'll have your instruction image to follow for that final assembly. Okay, so now slide. And we've got the base we need for layouts five and six, just automatically, because we prepped it in advance. Empty the pocket. Everything's in here. So I'm gonna start out with this large six by 12 on the right. I did leave a little uh, margin here. And then let's take those larger deep blue pieces and those are going to be framed up in the upper left corner of the right side and nested with the white it really makes it pop doesn't it one of the die cuts or the laser cut butterflies goes here and there is a small journaling prompt where i added a loop of ribbon and there is a i don't think it's this one we'll get to it later <laughs> now take the other larger deep blue oh actually take this strip and it's going to go on the left side and we're going to differentiate between the strip and the print with these two narrow pieces of deep blue usually what i do here is add the strip make sure it's nice and level with the help of your grid ruler so i would place this here and position the strip right next to it then I come in with my needle tip applicator of glue and run glue along the edge of the strip using the strip as my stabilizing guide. And then I can just stick these down because these are so narrow. Kind of, I don't really like putting glue on the strip directly, but I'd rather do it on the paper. Hope that made sense and that it was helpful. Okay, now we're taking this and placing it with this guy. It's a nice little... I don't know, title-ish feeling. You have a narrow piece of blue and you're gonna take this How Rare and Beautiful You Are and then to the right of that, you should have another uh, piece that's the same height and that finishes at the top edge of our page. Now this other deep blue square and there should be a just a text block. It's gonna tuck right underneath it and then we have our two vertical mats like so over here this nests with the remaining deep blue up here and then this goes beneath it it's the same width and it fits beautifully i'm going to take a second and show you my little trick with the double of the chain linked ribbon so first of all you put the title on top of the mat and then take some of the plentiful amount of this grow grain ribbon and I'm going to cut the two lengths that are past the width of this piece. Take one of the loops and fold it in half and with uneven ends I'll just add tape. Okay. Then position the center of the folded piece in the middle of the, the paper and wrap the tape around so it stays. <laughs> Now we have the other piece. This is so wonderfully simple. Ribbon has grain, so I usually check to make sure the ribbon drops in the same way I'm about to make force it to go, which is to wrap itself through that loop. So I just ran it through. And then I usually support the ribbon with my hand, with my left hand, and pull with my right hand. Turn it over, add the tape, and we've got a nice little ribbon embellishment on this fab. We added a little applique right here. And since I had six of them, I can add them to here. Now, if you're gonna add pictures on top of this, then don't add the applique, obviously. I, 
I always try to remember to say this, but the purpose of these cut-aparts is to help you finish layouts when you don't have enough pictures of a certain event. If you have a ton of pictures, just put one there, put one there, put one there, you know, just add your pictures where you want. And, uh, but the cut-aparts are always there for you. To glance at that my finished adhered. Um, again, those are the three appliques look really sweet. A little loop of the blue silk ribbon and then I added this with my uh, book binding glue as well. This is how I dispense it from this handy needle tip applicator. If you don't have one, make sure you pick one of those up along with our glue. And then here we have the other page. Again, I showed you how this works. Add that with book binding glue, you're done. Easy peasy. Time to slide again. So I'm taking this base of layout five and stacking it onto six and then slide to this gorgeous, I love to call it a champagne color because that's what it feels like to me. Nice and sparkly champagne. I should say sparkling wine. Okay, so now we have this stuff coming out of pocket three and four, and I'm looking at the image then on the top of page four of your instructions. It's the bottom image. You can see the, the sand metallic base. So again, it's always a good idea to begin with those larger pieces. I'm gonna go with torn edge near the top, but not touching the top. And the same here, torn edge near the bottom, maybe about an inch up, okay? Then I have a metallic aqua strip that I'm gonna nest with love is like a butterfly. The other half of that sentiment is going to be nested with this deep blue, so that's going to go toward the bottom. And here's the answer. It goes where it pleases, and it pleases wherever it goes. Then two horizontal aqua metallic mats. You're going to notice that there's some aqua color beneath this and above this. That's the ribbon, and I'm using it like just like a transition color between this and the base. It adds a little. I'll show you more about that in a second. Um, but as you're assembling your page, you need to pay attention to that. Now, of the two larger mats left in the metallic, there's one that's a little shorter that's going to fit this. Clip the corners, pop a, a punch through both layers, and then add some of this champagne-colored ribbon going through the top and wrapping around to the back of the page. I'll show you how that works in a moment. And I did attach a cute little laser cut butterfly kind of within the vicinity there. Now across this area, I love how this worked out. It's like a little puzzle. So you have a vertical and then nested with white. Another vertical deep blue nested with the cut apart. Then I'm gonna put two pieces here. First along the top will be the dark aqua nested with this butterfly. And then below that, and it's gonna fit within the space very nicely. Oh, actually I switched this. Boom, and boom. So I put the journaling tag on the top, butterfly here. You can put wherever you want. Across the bottom then two, I added one, two, and three of these die cut tags as a set. Now, if you take scissors, and I got a pretty big scissors here, but I'm gonna cut a little V into this piece. That gives me this nice banner shape and then I can also use scissors to round, it's like a, like a little bullet tip, I don't know, rounded side to this. You can just eyeball that. It gives it a little just creativity feel right there. And of course, we still have some, some of these pretty butterflies that can go like wherever you like. Nice. Okay, finished pages. Oh yes, I added this lovely embellishment. The three tags just topped, just threaded with some, some aqua through there and then taped it on the back. Same thing here, I added some silk and you can see all that turned out. Now you wanna know how to make the bow. I'll quick show you how to do that. And if you already know how to do this, we can, we can skip this. So basically, you have to make a couple of loops and I use a, quite a bit of uh, like a cellophane tape. No, the, the largest loop, you decide how large you want it to be, but you know, let's see. Do you wanna know how, much, how big this is? I'll measure, I'll measure to see. Okay, that's about seven inches, okay? So I'm gonna cut 
a seven eighth or seven inch ish piece and loop it around and I'm going to tape the loop. This is a great way to use these nice wide ribbons. You gotta make sure your ends are straight or it's gonna peek out, not gonna look as good. Okay, there's a loop, that wasn't too bad. Now, I'll probably cut like a six inch ribbon next and make a second loop. And tape. Okay. Now I think what I did in this case, yeah, that ribbon is pretty darn close in size. Let's make this guy a little smaller. That's gonna be pretty. Now I need my base. So what I typically do here to get that nice um, swallow's tail is fold the ribbon in half lengthwise and cut at an angle. And then same over on this end cut at an angle toward the fold, toward the center. Let's see how long this one is. That's seven inches also. Okay, so good. Now, that might be a little longer than what I have, no problem. The last thing I need is a small piece. This is like two inches, two and a half inches. And take some tape and tape, create a T shape. Okay, that's my T. Turn it over and just tape this to the ribbon T. There. Now grab your loops. Make sure the seam of the loop is facing down and center. And bring your T around to the back. All of this can be adjusted, no problem. And I'll tape. And then you might have some excess that you want to trim. So I'm just going to take away this little edge here. And now I have my beautiful embellishment. I realized that was took a little time. Um, it's not a whole lot of time for an embellishment with that kind of bang. You know, it just, it's so pretty. And of course, I can still remove a little length from this if it's too long. Not a big deal. Just cut that off, recenter, you know, it'll be fine. So that's how you make that really gorgeous 7 8 inch embellishment. You can do it with smaller ribbons as well. Uh, and if you're a card maker, you'll also like this bow because it doesn't have a big knot that causes a bulk building, <laughs> uh, technical term, for mailing your cards. So again, this, is, this was page three and four. Oh, we didn't look at three yet. Here you go. The remnant of the ribbon that I used to thread through the top of this tag and wrap the ends around to the back. So maybe you wanna do that first, be conservative with your tails, and then you'll have plenty for the bow. I had enough, so here you go. Now, sliding again, slide and stack. We arrive at the beautiful purple. Mm, such a pretty color. Emptying the contents of pocket A here now and consulting my image in the instructions. I can see right away I wanna place the two butterflies here and then the other one here. Now with the narrow strips that have the blocks I'm going to leave a little space. It's going to give me the illusion of layering by leaving space between the torn edge, the purple, and then the strips. Below that you'll be just wanting to make sure you have enough space for two vertical white mats. These are only four by sixes and then you have, um, let's see, you have these two blue pieces. Now I'm going to find until you spread your wings. That's going to fit right there. And then there's another tag that fits with the other one. You're going to have a skinny aqua metallic. It's the same height of the blue, and you can nest it with this guy. Then solid blue nested with purple. Dark blue nested with white. Two metallic aqua will fit there. And the other two will go here at an angle. Trim your circle, tuck it behind here. It will overlap your photo mat, that's okay. Just make sure you don't get any adhesive between this and the mat so you can slide your picture. And this bad boy is gonna go there. And I think this was supposed to go on my previous layout, 
which again is an advantage to this stacking technique. So I can just lift that up and put, put him there. That's that. I think I used the other half of my uh, laser cut butterfly coming out to the right here. Wow, what a what a nice what a nice set of pages. Here's a fun little ribbon trick. So once I had this all this nested, I took my crocodile and I punched a hole here and here, and I just ran ribbon through there. So here you can see the ribbon going in and going back out again, and it. I just secured it on the back side of the nested strip. So easy peasy. Here I looped the ribbon through the tag and then tied a small little knot into the ribbon and glued that on separately. So this is two pieces of ribbon here. It's a nice illusion, works great. For the other side, let's see, any finishing tips here? Not really. Again, it was a hand cut circle. If you have a die that happens to a thin cutting die and a, like a die cutting machine to cut the circle, that's fine. But hand cut works great. And just scoot it underneath there and add your um, filigree. And then again, it's open here for the photo to slide in easily. That is your Butterflies Remix. I hope you like this one. And stay tuned to the blog. My guess is it hasn't happened yet because it's just off the press. But Karen or one of us here on the team will probably take this entire collection and turn it into some beautiful cards. We've made uh, a beautiful Butterflies card kit in the past as well, but um, we're trying to create our page kits so they can adapt quite easily to make a, a mitt full of cards or maybe a combination. Maybe you only want like two pages and the rest cards or vice versa. So this can get it done no matter what your crafting uh, preference is. And uh, thanks for joining me. If this was your first time, um, maybe it felt a little overwhelming. I just want to encourage you to hang in there. Uh, keep working at your craft. You will get better and better uh, the more you do it, especially when you follow along with my efficient method. The best part now is that you don't have to organize anything else. Just add your pictures to your pages and call it good. I hope to see you soon in another Club Scrap workshop. Thanks for joining me.